guys welcome back this time we'll be installing elixir and phoenix i'm so sorry it took so long to make this video uh, the holidays and uh, vacations and moving got on the way so i've been slacking a little bit but now i'm back um so i'm super excited about elixir because it's in fairly new language it's not like ruby that you can just type things into google and find the solutions to everything so I'm um, hoping that tutorials and this guide will help you out in your Elixir journey. Um, just a little bit of background on my Elixir experience. Last year, I uh, got a coworker to introduce me to it and I started working on Elixir apps shortly after. Um, I've really enjoyed it. At first it was hard because I came from Ruby and it's object oriented and I had to go into functional programming, um, which is, Difficult at first, and even Elixir is a little bit more different because it's like things run into process in processes, so you have to think about, you know, running things in processes. And it's actually really nice because you can roll things, run all things in parallel, and it's really efficient. It's a really powerful tool, really. So it's super exciting. Um, it's super easy to set up workers and run random tasks, and it's amazing. So um, hopefully you guys are excited. Um, I'll try to put up tutorials and be a resource for those that are learning. I'm still learning myself, obviously. I don't even have a year of experience, but they say that it's easier when someone with your same level of experience teaches you than someone really experienced, because I run into problems that more experienced developers don't run into, like installing Postgres. It hates me, and you'll see it in this video, but um, I feel like we speak a different language and senior developers so just hard to understand sometimes, but that's fine. I'll get there one day. Um, so let's get started uh, with the installation of Phoenix and Elixir Guide. First thing we're gonna do is install Elixir. We are going to go to the Elixir homepage and grab the commands from there. We're gonna be using Brew to install it. Um, so we're gonna grab this Brew install Elixir from here. Um, first we're going to update, so we're going to run brew update, if I can type it correctly. Uh, and then brew install elixir, then it starts installing, and it's done in two seconds. Just kidding, I fast forward this video, it should take a little bit longer than that. And then you're good, we're going to run our IEX console to make sure elixir is installed. And we should get a hello back from elixir after we, put, we use IO puts. Right now we're gonna install Phoenix. Let's put some sauce in that spaghetti. We're gonna go to the Phoenix page and grab the commands from there. Um, here are the installation guides for Phoenix. This is what I use. First, we need to make sure we have the package manager called hex for Phoenix. Uh, we're gonna run this command in our console to install them. Make that bigger for you so you can actually see Type that in. Yes, I'm sure. Click Y, type Y. Yes. Right. Let's see what else we need. We need to make sure we have the Elixir version that it's specified in there, which is 1.4, if I can type. Uh, we have 1.5, yay, we're good with Phoenix. Compatible. What else? Oh, here's finally the command we actually need to install Phoenix. We're gonna copy that and paste it into our console. Let it install. Yes. Sweet, we have Phoenix. Good. Um, let's see what else we need. We have no install in a previous tutorial. And looks like we need. Bum, bum, bum. Postgres, my worst enemy, and I run into problems. Yay. Now we're gonna create our first Phoenix app. So we're gonna go back to the Phoenix guides up and running, um, and we're gonna use this command mix Phoenix new hello to create our app. Writing on the console, then we run it. Install the dependencies. Phoenix uses Brunch as his uh, front end like assets management stuff, so that's what it's asking you. Um, then it lets you know all the things you can run now because Phoenix is nice and friendly. You can also find these on the guides. How to create an app, how to get the devs and compile them, 
and how to create your database after you cd into the directory of the app and how to run the server so here i'm going to try to um i'm going to go into my the directory of my app and creating on my app with Ecto and it's compiling compiling all the assets um, if it asks you to install reverse say yes then uh, compiles everything fast yeah, go fast and then uh, uh, no Postgres hates me I told you guys um, I haven't started my DB if you all right so I didn't have my database started hopefully you guys followed what I said and um, to use brew services Postgres start from the beginning but I didn't I tried all these things you can see here on the screen my thorough research of what's the best way to do it um, that's why I recommended after you tried to use this launch agents thing I just found it complicated and decided to show you guys how to do it with brew instead um, this worked to start it but I wasn't sure what all that stuff meant so I just decided to use something that obscures all that stuff and uh, I could understand so now I complained to me about not having the role Postgres and so that's a different error so at least we got rid of the start the app error which is nice okay so here's my second error when I couldn't find my role name um, here's when I discovered finally to use brew services since you can use it to start um, stop or restart your database uh, use brew tab to install it brew tab homebrew services and as you can see you can start your database here it's already started so you can stop it or restart it um, if you want there's also an app you can use a software installed in your computer to manage your app if you prefer to do it that way i think that's what i have on my computer at work but um I can't remember quite the name. It was like Postgres Admin if you want to look it up. But yeah, that might work out better if you don't want to deal with this through the command line. It might be a better option. But here I saw my database. Um, it seems like everything's working well. So I'm going to go into my project and try to drop my database, which it gets mad because I haven't started Postgres. So then I. Uh, start Postgres and then try to drop my database again and it should work this time yay now everything's working smoothly I can create and drop databases and everything's fine Postgres has always been a challenge for me so I'm sorry if I dragged you into this and you didn't want to so all right moving on we can finally create tables now that we have Postgres up and running um, we're gonna run our migration, mix ecto gen migration, name of migration, which is create table in this case. We're not listening to Game of Thrones, or maybe we are. Open my IDE, Adam in this case, and go to the prep folder where our migrations get stored under the repo folder um, so that we can see it. It's auto generated. So we're gonna create the table. I changed the name after I did this, so if you want to put create table users, do that in advance. Um, then we add our timestamps, which is our created at and inserted at, well actually inserted at and updated at column names, yes. Um, we're going to add a field name, name and it's going to be type string, um, then we're going to add, <sighs> we change a table name to users yeah that's better and then username or maybe we should change it to last name so we have name and last name for our users and another string then we're going to run our migration with mix ecto migrate everything should go well means postgres working thank you guys so much for looking at this video and following and listening to me even though i don't make sense sometimes and I'm sorry about the Postgres stuff, but I hope it worked out for you. Um, I'll be putting out more content, hopefully soon, and more often than I have been. So stay tuned.